All right, what's going on, people? We got another Athletes Corner edition for you all. And this time we were joined by former St. Mary Spartans guard, from former Endicott College guard, Mr. Todd Burton Jr. He's got a book coming out called Just Smile. It's a book of quotes that he was, he's been working on for a while. So he came on to chat about the book. Uh, yeah, we just what gave him the inspiration to write it. All that good stuff. Um, we didn't talk much about his basketball, but that we'll save that for another one. But this one, we focused on the book, Just Smile. So check this Athlete's Corner out, and I hope you all enjoy it. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Athlete's Corner. Y'all know, you know, y'all see him as the co-host all the time, but he's in the guest chair right now because he got a book coming out it's coming out soon a book of quotes i got mr Todd burton jr in the building yes yeah, yeah, yeah we're here we're about to talk about the book just smile at least you woke up today it's coming out soon so i know y'all some of y'all gonna be anticipating it but it's coming out soon but first what got you to the idea of even start thinking about writing a book um my mom told me years ago that you know what i mean i should get into writing quotes because i'm very quotable i'm always just thinking about things just at the spare moment and sometimes just being funny and things like that you know on, on the podcast i do a couple rhymes and things like that not trying to rap but you know just you know just be entertaining and spontaneous mm -hmm. is now is this something that you your younger self would have even dreamed about doing or even thought about doing <laughs> if you if you were to tell your younger self that you wrote that you were writing a book not at all not at all so you we grew up together you knew my personality and how i was as a person that's the last thing i'd be thinking about i wouldn't know what i'd write about yeah you know what i mean so not at all yeah and it's like writing a book is so much about just I mean, a lot of people want to tell their story, and a lot of people write a book to express themselves. Some people that write fictional books is just whatever they got in their mind, they want to put it down in the, on paper, and, you know, it, it takes off from there. And like, well, for you, the process of putting this together, because there's a lot of quotes you just randomly come up with, just um, how did it go from just you blurting it out to you, like, putting the structure in the uh, and having it in a book because there is some sort of st structure you have to have when you put something together in a book. Yeah, well, well, from the jump, it originally started, you know, me being in the public school system, just being me be around the kids, motivate them to try to get stuff done when they didn't have the motivation or care to get stuff done. And they would do work for me compared to other teachers. Right. And that was kind of like my, I want to say, my preparation to even starting the process because I'd have certain quotes I'd say continuously almost every day. That's kind of sounding like a broken record and then they go throughout the school saying these things. So after right. a while I'm like, oh, I got an impression on these kids and they're starting to pick up some of the things I'm throwing down. Yeah. And so and so then it's like a couple of them told me I should be an inspirational speaker and then my mom added on to the me making a book of quotes. I'm like, you know what, let me tackle the idea of trying to create something and going on this journey of creating a book. So I don't know. I went on, you know, KDP, which is Amazon. Mm -hmm. but, but but before that, I had to. I just wrote them down. Just wrote them down. Yeah, and, and yeah, you bring up working in the in the school system for for that period of time. Um, did you did you see like? Because sometimes in school, kids don't want to read. No, they don't want like they don't want to read. They they sometimes if it, if it's not interesting to them, they're not gonna read it. Is that something that also played a role in it? Because I mean, working in the public school system is, you know, it can be tricky at times, like getting kids to focus and read like that, but it, is that something you saw? Um, at times I did, but it's funny because I would tell them, like, you guys read more than any generation probably ever. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, you're on Instagram reading four or five paragraph posts. That's a form of reading still. That's still literature that you're putting in your scalp that yeah. you're still consuming. So yeah, you guys read more than anybody. <laughs> you guys read every day. Right, like right. legit. Like us growing up, we read magazines, yeah, like yeah. comic books, comic books, things of that nature. We didn't read novels and stuff, which this generation doesn't either. But they're they're able to have eBooks. Mm -hmm. They're able to get get excerpts from books online and things yeah. like that. So which will intrigue them to maybe read the book itself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. That's that's one interesting thing about reading that it just popped up. Like everybody, like a lot of people don't 
don't like reading novels. A lot of people like reading novels. A lot of people like reading comic books. A lot of people like reading like short form stories and stuff like that. It's like everybody has their niche in reading because there be like people will say, oh, I don't like reading, but you might see them reading like, they'll read a cool magazine or a cool like Marvel comic book or something like that. I mean, my cousins, my older cousins, they were big on the Marvel comics. That's why to this day they're big, they're diehard Marvel fans because of the comics. So it's like every every group or every job, everybody has like their own niche for, for reading. Yeah, I think it also happens too when you get more options with reading. Back in the day, they only had novels. Then you start getting, I think, newspaper, press, comics, and then people start making comic books, and then science fiction, and then yeah. biographies, and all these natures. So when you get more options, that they catch up with the times, yeah. and then the younger generations, I want to say, they pick what they like out of the litter, and it's usually the more trendy things or the more more current things that yeah. kind of they can relate to yeah, and yeah. it's hard to relate to a novel i just tell people because as a kid or a teenager your imagination runs wild and when you read a novel and you see the movie that's based on that novel it's never what you think it is because your mind always makes it greater than what the, the movie kind of makes it yeah and we had slam too like we had slam east bay like those are some of the stuff that we were reading also um as far as in your in your in your family was there like quotes from relatives or parents or anybody that kind of, that you remember that kind of helped you throughout your journey in life um man that, that's that's a good question i didn't even think about that one um i would say my father you know just growing up mind your business keep your mouth shut and him being in law enforcement yeah right. <laughs> This is kind of funny to me, right, but right, you know, right. for one, he prides himself on being a man and prides himself on just keeping to himself and mm -hmm. mind his business, staying out of harm's way, but also yeah. doing his job in, in that field. Yeah. So that's one thing, you know, and you know, you get the you get the regular quotes, you know, you won't won't um, make an ass out of you and me. So don't assume. Yeah. So don't assume you make make an ass out of you and me. I think my mom always said that growing up, and you know, just I would say just more the personalities of my relatives growing okay, up and how yeah. they were as people and how they carried themselves. Like my, my uncle Mark, you know him. He's very clean. Yeah. Neat, clean creases. You'll never see him with a, with a dirty pair of sneakers, and he wears probably all white sneakers right. all the time of every sort and fashion. <laughs> so like that's why I'm always clean and neat, and you know. Yeah, man, it's really just how they carry themselves, how they treat people, and how I see how they affect the people, and how people are affected by them, and vice versa. Yeah, so. all those like different personalities yeah, that yeah. you have within your life, I yeah. feel like it was like kind of like a pot, like kind of like making soup. Yeah, kinda yeah, like, yeah. Kind of like that. making gumbo. Yeah, I, I, I had a grandfather that I was great. God rest his soul. My grandfather Joseph, who I um, dedicate part of this to, book to him. He was, was six five. He was very dark. He was a handsome man pearly white smile but very intimidating but he was probably the nicest relative out of all of them you get what I'm saying yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. certain things that you would think that I would be intimidated by people but I'm not because some of the most intimidating looking people in my family were some of the most gentle people right 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 most of the time people that are tall and intimidating are not that are not really not that intimidating it's yeah. just like it's like a, that inferiority complex that yeah. people have when they see someone that's like my dad, for instance, like he, he's a very nice guy. Yeah. You just got to get over the nervousness of speaking to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to break that wall and just got to realize he might just stare at you and not say a word for, for, yeah, for a second or two. Right, right, right. right. Processing, that's all. Uh, a few quotes in here we want to read. Um, I've never been an Easter egg. I have never been Easter egg hunting, so why would I put all my eggs in one basket? That is one. My last part, my aunt always says that. Growing up, she was always like, never, ever, ever, ever put your egg, all your eggs in one basket. That's Well, that's, actually, that's a quote I heard growing up, and yeah. I just, you know, added something to it, a little remixed it, because um, I've never Easter egg hunting. I don't come from that family. I don't come from that dynamic. You don't either. Granted, I did get Easter egg baskets from my dad, which I appreciate to him. I mean, appreciate him for it, but one thing I hate is fake grass. And he, <laughs> he used to love throwing fake grass in the Easter egg basket, so, you know, I appreciate your dad, but just, I've always hated fake grass grass as a kid. I actually yelled at for not picking it up and it's like, dude, I didn't even want this fake grass. I just want the candy in here. Right, 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 but nah, it's all love, though. Alright, another one we got here. This Don't burn bridges, just take an alternate route. Man, ain't that true. Yeah, um, my experience with people, I don't care enough to argue with you about certain things that really won't matter 10, 20, 5 days from now. 
And like even me and you, we faded away at some point just because I was graduating from high school. You still had a couple years left. I went to prep school and college, and we met up after I graduated, and, and you were going to North Shore. So it's like we never had any issues. Right. We just w went on our separate paths, and people sometimes just don't know how to distance themselves from people without making it awkward or ma without making it difficult. Right, right, right. And I'm just one of those people. Like, yeah, you might not hear from me for, from a while, but there's no issues. I'm just pursuing things in a different avenue. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But I might come back around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Which, uh, the bridge is always open because I didn't ruin anything. And you shouldn't ruin anything. Definitely. Positive, positive vibes help the soul glow. Just let your soul glow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> When, when you helping people out, it just yeah. sometimes makes you feel good about yourself. Yeah. You know, you just, it makes you feel good when you hold the door for old lady. She actually thanks you. She looks at you with genuine, gen, with a genuine look and right. of thank, thankfulness. Yeah, I mean, you appreciate it. It's good. And my grandfather always said, "Man, you want to do one one deed a day, well, you know, yeah. one good deed a day." And that, and his good deed a day was letting somebody cross the street yeah. when he was driving. So, so I, you know. <laughs> I don't see one of my favorite quotes in here that that occurred on the show a few times is the uh, battle the UFC and boxing. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ballets and a quiet taste. Everybody loves strippers. This is true. This is true. Um, honestly, that slipped my mind. I wish you, man, I done showed you this book. I wish you would have brought it to my attention. But, you know, I also wanted to keep it, you know, yeah. somewhat a little, a little respectful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make it comfortable for everyone. Yeah. I don't want to make anybody a little too uncomfortable. There are some quotes that people might question, but... Did it, Everybody's not going to catch every quote, but there's a quote in there for everybody. Everybody do love strippers, though. No, I'll fact. tell you that. Everybody that's, loves strippers. Right, that's fact. Everybody, so I went to Detroit. I gave a stripper a geography lesson. <laughs> <That's> a <st> <laughs> <laughs> that is a story for another day. Uh, I see you, you dedicated this book to your Uncle Andre, your grandpa, your grandfather, and your grandmother. Um, just quickly, um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people know, know your uncle and your grandpa. Just for those that didn't get to know them, or I just... Uh, quickly just tell him how they were like personality wise and just you know um, and I know your grandfather did a lot in the city yeah. as well too well, I'll start with my grandfather my grandfather Joseph Burton he was well known in the community he taught in English taught in, I think Thurgood Marshall coached played for the Lynn Lions the, oh, yeah, yeah. They're from I, Lynn I, Lions they got a picture yeah they legendary picture. legendary squad I think graduated from Lynn English went to Franklin Pass he was just a cool guy man like to be honest with you. he was kind of like a a big kid and then once he had me, it was kind of like I was like his little homie just because we were both only children. So mm -hmm. I was he was the most relatable to me in, the, right. in my family and kind of still is in a sense. But well, other than, I got a cousin CJ is only child, too. But like but for the most part, it was just him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Uncle Andre, um, that's my mother's middle brother. You know, what I mean, she has one more brother out here and another brother in, in Virginia. But like that mm -hmm. was her closest one. They were like Irish twins, basically. Mm -hmm. Like damn, they're born in almost a year apart. You know, what I mean, um, if everybody knows my uncle Andre, he was just a fun time. He had his own, they like his own lingo, his own energy. There was his one on one, you know what I mean? Just, just I've never really seen him have a bad day. And even when he was down, he wasn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Never yeah. really seen. Never, he never let you see him at his worst. Right, right, right. And he lived every day like a, it was a party. That's why, unfortunately, he, he didn't last too long. But um, then my my grandmother Louise, she's probably one of the funniest people in my life. She, my, this is my great grandmother, and yeah, she was. Pure comedy, great energy. Step on her, you go to a house whenever you want it. I'm, my thing with relatives, if I have to call before I come over, I ain't coming over. <laughs> yeah, 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 like with family, up. I just come over. Like that's yeah. how I am with family. Like, yeah. Yeah, cause I feel the same way with me. You yeah. know, just come, come over, come visit me whenever. But um, yeah, man, that was it. Like they always had good energy, and they died a little too soon. My grandma Louise, she was older, so I understand that. Yeah. But my uncle Andre, my grandfather, definitely passed too soon. And, they would have been ecstatic for me making this book, but definitely, definitely. Well, the book is coming out soon. There's no, there's no release date yet, but it is coming out soon, correct? <laughs> very, very soon. Like, uh -huh. like very soon. Like. And, and where can where can people find it? On Amazon, on Amazon, Amazon.com. And I think I should be able to get, you know, what I mean, get bulk and stuff like that. So she be able to contact me as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People that go on Amazon, they know what what happens when you go on Amazon. <laughs> you go for one thing. Next thing you know, you've spent over two hundred dollars on things you actually don't need. And and the good thing about Riley. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and the good thing about this book too, I feel like how you said that the generation doesn't like to read. It's an easy read. Yeah. 
Yep, yep. I was, yep. Telling, I was telling somebody yesterday, like, people try to be so philosophical that they end up confusing the consumer. Right, right. And this, it's going to just soak right in. It's going to be easy to consume. 38 man. pages. Yeah, and it's cheap, man. All righty. That is Tom Burton Jr. Make sure <laughs> when the book comes out. Appreciate it. You get it. Just smile, because a smile makes the day go by a little bit better. Definitely does. Definitely. Yeah, you all have been watching Athletes Corner. Oh, yeah, don't worry. We're, we're going to have a part two, because part two, we talking about we talk about hoops with him. We talk about St. Mary's. We talk about Canterbury. We talk about Endicott. We talk about Philippines. <laughs> all that good stuff. Stuff that y'all don't know. Or people that don't talk to him on a consistent basis don't know. But y'all get, y'all gonna know that pretty soon. So be on the lookout for part two. But this was part one. Have a great one, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Pedro, as always. Appreciate you, P. Big, big thank you to Todd Burton Jr. for chatting with us about the book. If you haven't got it yet, go get it when it comes out. It's on Amazon. Check it out. It's called Just Smile. It's a book of quotes. So I hope you enjoyed this Athlete's Corner segment. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen.